<laughs> so, so it's everybody this morning. Pretty clean carpets. Oh my gosh, I, they, this just, they just did a fabulous job. If anybody wants um, a reference, I've used ChemDry for 30 years off and on, and then the franchise closed, and it's been closed forever, but obviously it's open again now. We I, have a coupon. Always, Where's the coupon? Did I, I leave know. it up here? I don't know. If we have a coupon, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. They Let's always had done a good job. I like the process. It doesn't leave residue. They don't use soap and tear all your carpets apart. I, 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 I just always liked it. Um, and thanks to all the help getting that all done, especially to Mary Lou, who yeah. dedicated all yeah. Monday morning for that. Yeah. And, and people showed up to move furniture and stuff. It was awesome. And by the bay. By the bay. By the bay. Um, if you have coffee without a lid, or if, even if you had one with a lid, if you spill it, anybody comes online in here, if you spill it, just tell us. Yeah. Please clean it up, but just tell us because we have some stuff to clean things. and. Sooner the better. The sooner the better. You know, no shame, no blame. We don't blame. We don't shame. Yeah. Just help us get it clean. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Head to heart. This, that's uh, Arita I has know. a discussion group. I and know. today's discussion is. Maybe not my sheet. Oh, don't go by that. Oh, don't go by that? <laughs> oh, she's on her own. All right. Okay, whatever. All right. So. Perfect. To be determined. <laughs> Expectations. Oh, that's Phil's favorite subject. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It is the source, the source of, of all, all pain. Misery. Yeah. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a couple Peter Saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. George and John. And John said. What did John say? All we are saying is give, give peace a chance. chance. So. all we are saying. Is give peace a chance. It starts here. Yep, yep. Uh, and George, uh, the IQ and the life expectancy of the average American recently passed each other in opposite directions. Yikes. Yep, yep. <coughs> and, 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 and. Oh, uh, there is no recorded date uh, for Christ's birth. Uh, Christmas became an official church holiday in AD 320. Pope Julius I chose December 5th in, the, in an effort to absorb the customs of the pagan festival uh, Sat Saturnalia, uh, an extended hedonistic uh, holiday marking the winter solstice during which the normal Roman social order was turned upside down. So they had to put a stop to that. So. Okay. No more fun. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not touching that with a 10 No, purple. no. Uh, soup and fish explain half the emotions of life. Soup and fish? Yeah. Well, no, I just liked it. I just soup liked it. And soup, soup and soup fish. Soup and fish. Who said that? That, that was uh, Sidney Smith, 1771. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Sidney. Right. I don't get it. I, well, I I'm still yeah. not getting it. I know. Well, it's soup. just kind of, yeah, it's, it's goofy. I never did understand Sydney that well. It's good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Sydney didn't make any sense. Sydney. Even then. Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. Uh, visits um, always give pleasure, if not the arrival, the departure. <laughs> old Portuguese proverb. Oh, that one I get. And that now, get. a French proverb. Yeah. There's no such thing as a, as a pretty good omelet. <laughs> It's either really good or really bad. I that's that was the way I took it. That's the way I took it. Oh no, oh, I gotta do fruit cake. Oh yeah. Fifty ways to recycle fruit cake. Uh, do you have a wobbly table leg? Thin slices of fruit cake um, placed under the leg will eliminate that wobble forever. <laughs> The four, I don't, I don't get that one, so I'll skip it. The best place to find a helping hand is at the other end of your own arm. <laughs> and charity begins at home. Yes, it does. It does indeed. 
Everybody's quiet this morning. Everybody okay? Yeah. Having a good day? Yeah. Gonna go to the boat races? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked me Friday, oh, you're gonna go to the boat race? You know, what are you gonna do for the boat races? And I said, I'm gonna stay away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got the comment. Yes? Uh, we have rain in neighborhood and someone on neighborhood or whatever one it was said, has anybody heard those roaring sounds that come out every so often? Does anybody know what that is? <laughs> yeah, that roaring sound. Is. I don't know. Apparently not. Apparently not. Yeah. I saw the uh, air show yesterday. Did anybody see that? Yeah. That was cool. F-35 going up and uh, shooting um, flares. Uh, flares. It was really kind of cool. It was fun. I heard it. It looked like a Chinese plane side by side. Ah, I didn't Ooh. see that. And the red stars underneath the silver plane, like those Chinese. Huh. I don't know if it was being towed or just kind of drone. Hmm. From my neighborhood, I couldn't see a lot, but I, I knew where the plane was. Misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't remember if I actually did these. I think what I did is I picked these for last Sunday, and then because we had some new people, I decided not to do them. <laughs> so I'll do them today. Okay, what do you get from a pampered cow? Spoiled milk. Did I do that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. So then I also did, must have done that one too, and I own I, I did yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. So OK, Keep so um, uh, what's the difference between roast beef and pea soup? Anyone can roast beef? <laughs> That's why I didn't say these ones. These are the ones. These are the yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, it, they'd get kind of worse. So, uh, where, where do you find a dog with no legs? Right where you left them. I know they're really kind of bad, but and they're getting they're getting worse. Why do gorillas have big nostrils? Who knows. They have big fingers. <laughs> YouTube's gonna get us off. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna put a big X on around us. So, why do blind people? Uh, well, they don't why have don't rules against that? I know. Why don't blind people like to skydive? Well, oh, it scares the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Told you they were bad. They were bad. They were bad. This was kind of, I, 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 I like this one. Uh, we're going to end with not a joke. Can we do that? OK. Uh, this is apparently a legend from the Cherokee Indians. Uh, do you know the, uh, um, his father, yes, wait, do you know the Indian uh, youth site passage, youth rite of passage? Uh, his father takes him into the forest, blindfolds him, and leaves him alone. Um, he is required to sit on a stump the whole night and not remove the blindfold until the rays of the morning sun shine through. He cannot cry out for help to anyone. Once he survives the night, he is a man. He cannot tell the other boys of his experience because each lad must come into the manhood, their manhood on their own. The boy is naturally terrified. He can hear all kinds of noises. Wild beasts must surely be all around him. Maybe even some humans might do him harm. The wind blew the grass and the earth and shook his stump, but he sat stoically, then never removing his blindfold. He would be the only, uh, it would be the only way he could become a man. Finally, after a horrific night, the sun appeared and he removed his blindfold. It was then that he discovered, <laughs> it was then that he discovered his father sitting next to him on the stump. He had, uh, he had been watching him the entire night protecting his son from harm. We too are never alone, even when we don't know it. Our Heavenly Father, Spirit, whatever you call him, is watching over us, sitting on the stump beside us. When trouble comes, all we really have to do is reach out. Yep. Cool. Made me cry. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Score for me. Anything else? Um... My Shaman Stones class, yeah. really briefly. Um, I've got two new ones ready to roll, and uh, there might two be... Two new stones? <laughs> that, too. Hmm. They're so helpful. Um, <laughs> um, 
So finishing up the first class on Tuesday, then a new class starts on Thursday, and then another class on Saturday, the following Saturday. Um, but I think there's still some more interest, and I have a couple of people that, so I could start a third class. So if there's any interest, let me know. And if you need more information. She may never do this again. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I been, don't know. Kinda, it's I know. been kind of fun. Oh, wait, you know, this brings up a real quick subject for me. And, of course, I didn't tell her what I'm going to do. Oh, never Lord. do. Never do. Never do. Jan only has, like, this much energy. And everybody thinks she's got this much. <laughs> so if you call or text um, in the evening, especially at 10 o'clock or after, uh, the chances of getting back to you are pretty slim no matter how critical it is um, she just doesn't have the energy so if she's not getting right back to you don't worry about it she will but it may not be anytime soon but she will so. So this last week I'm gonna cry it was the first time I've had to delay people I had to cancel appointments and um, couldn't get back to four people four. I know. that's why I decided to say something because you so. never would no, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, I, if no matter what, I usually, okay, enough of that. She did what she could and it, right. was, right. it was enough. And it was enough, yep. It was so am I done? I think you're more than done. Oh, good. Are you, <laughs> how about bring me some coffee? I have a you want coffee? Yeah. Okay. In it. In a, In a cup with cup a lid. With a lid. <laughs> Here we go, teary. All right, <clears throat> just a second. So, but okay, can we talk about that a little bit more? Let me just finish that up with. So, I think it's a beautiful thing because you know I've had to learn to find my own voice and be able to speak my truth about a lot of things and to actually have a limit and be able to set a limit, set a clear limit, um, that's really big. It's really a big thing for me. So I'm really rather proud of myself for being able to do that for one thing. Um, but at the same time, it also shows me that how important it is to listen to my body, that my body is talking and um, I do the best I can, and sometimes the body says, oh, that's enough. And I, of course, will I listen? No, push, push, push. That's enough, push, push, push. So it's, it's been really good because it's taught me I, it's really important to pay attention. When I get the signals that I need to rest, it's really important to rest. And there's no shame, no blame, no harm, no foul. It's just humanity. You know, we are where we are. We're doing what we're the best that we can do. And, and my microphone's not on. <laughs> there. There we go. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think it's really important to trust where we are, to trust <coughs> ourselves. We're always second guessing where we're at and what we think other people expect of us, back to those expectations that <laughs> Uh, Arita is going to talk to you about later, or we're going to have a discussion about. So, all of that to say, let's move on. And I'd like to read to you, uh, oh, which one? I was going to read that one, but I think I need to read this one. Um, the prayer that, that I, I'm going to read right now is called Uplift Me. And I was writing uh, prayers out, and this hawk was circling overhead. So every once in a while you can hear the you know how they so. So anyway, if you can imagine that in your mind and join me in prayer, please. Loving spirit of light, uplift me. Past hurts, current fears, and worries of a future I cannot control, these weigh me down. Uplift my feeling self so that I feel secure and free. Uplift my spirit and soul so that I may soar above life's challenges. Assist me in rising into the flow of love and light that supports my journey. Help me to feel your presence. May it be so. Amen. 
and our gratitude is I'm grateful for divine presence that supports me now. Amen. Or glory. <clears throat> so what I want to talk to you about today, I'm going to talk about this much stuff and this much time. Um, have you ever noticed that sometimes people get stuck in a story? And you'll say, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. And then they start off in their story. And it's well rehearsed. You know, they don't miss a beat. And they've got the words down just right. And every part is that this person played or that person played. They've got that figured out and analyzed. Well, you know, that keeps us kind of in a mode of safety, I think. I think that cocoons us. But that cocoon also blocks us from living, really, really living. Um, and some people have a story about what that person did to them, or this circumstance happened, or that other illness. So they have all this stuff going on in their head. But, and I, and I think there's a time for those stories, because I think those stories can support us until we're in a place where we don't need the story anymore. And when we don't need the story anymore, it's kind of a challenge to break free because we've sucked into it so far. <clears throat> so I want us to look at our stories, but I want us to look at our stories from our own come from and to readdress that and find a new way to look at them. Because if we can shift our perspective, it shifts everything, changes everything. So I was reminded of uh, a book I read a long time ago. Have you heard of, um, Nonviolent, commun nonviolent Communication, A Language of Life, by Marshall B. Rosenberg, PhD. Uh, the nonviolent communication process that he shares, pretty cool stuff, but it's kind of labor intensive, so it's, it's not something I really use. But um, he has a couple of things, charts, charts, that I want to share with you. I'm not going to show you the whole dang thing, because that's a lot. But sometimes when we're stuck in our story, we use things like, I feel abandoned. Is abandoned a feeling? No. I feel betrayed. Is betrayed a feeling? No. I feel misunderstood. Is misunderstood a feeling? No. But those words are telling us that something is amiss and that we're not okay, that we've experienced some sort of a loss, a breach of a boundary. But here's the thing with boundaries. Boundaries suck. They just suck. Uh, I love them, but they suck. Um, we get them so confused. I'll never let that person hurt me again. Is that a sustainable boundary? No. Because if that person's a hurtful, <coughs> hateful person, they open their mouth and you happen to be in the room, you are going to get your good possibility you're going to get hurt. So that's not a safe, supportable boundary, sustainable boundary. A sustainable boundary is when that person says something that hurts my feelings, I'll leave the room. That's, I could do that. I can't force that person to change. But if it's a boundary, it's my boundary. It's what I'm going to do. It's about me. I get to take care of me in the best way I know how to take care of me. And maybe, maybe I screwed up. No shame, no blame. Well, that one wasn't a sustainable boundary. Let me look at that again. <clears throat> so when we, when we have a sense that we're saying these phrases that aren't really feelings, we've got a boundary that we needs to be revised. It's time to look at it. When we have positive feelings, positive feelings are like, when we, when we feel like our needs are being met, then we'll generate positive feelings, like free, friendly, uh, astonished, blissful, relaxed, relieved, motivated, optimistic, See, those are different. I, can, I feel optimistic. That's, see how that feels? And the trick here, too, is you can say, I am optimistic. Mm. I am free. Mm. I am happy. I am joyful. 
But when, when we have to add the word I feel to it, it's probably not a real feeling. That's a heads up. No shame, no blame. It's a heads up. That's time to like, take a look at something. When our needs are not being met, we're more likely to feel afraid, aggravated, disgusted, disheartened, distressed, downcast, um, lethargic, lonely, mad, mean. So, and the list goes on and on and on. Interesting that the list for the negative stuff is longer than the list for the positive stuff. <laughs> but that's how it is. <clears throat> so, there's another book called The Pathway by Elaine Mellon. And she was working with some teens, helping them with stuff. And she found this process that if she could get them to process out some major emotional things, they shifted. And you know, teens have a hard life. Boy, bless them. Um, and here's the process. The process is to take a look at it. First of all, notice, okay, I'm not happy. So, and I am feeling betrayed. Okay, that's not a feeling, so something's triggered here. Something's going on here. I need to take a look at that. That's important for me to take a look at right now. So once we notice that, then if we can look at anger, sadness, and fear. And then, once we take a look at those in a clear, clear way, then we can shift. And then she's got some steps for the shifting. So how you look at that is, I am angry because, well, I'm not angry, I'm, I'm so disappointed because they're, okay, wait. Underneath everything, the bottom line, anger is usually the anchor point. Find the anger, dig for it. Well, I'm sad, okay, I'm sad because, but get back to the anger too. Start with that, because if we can clear what makes us angry, then we can really get clear. I don't know about you, but anytime there's been a trauma or a difficulty or whatever, um, I get it cleared, and then lo and behold, here it comes again. <laughs> and then you gotta clear another level, and then you gotta clear another one, and it's just on and on. Remember Jesus said how many times you're supposed to forgive? 70 times seven or something like that. Every time it comes up, we got to work through it again. And so that's what he's talking about. So I'm angry. I'm angry because. What's the because? I'm angry because I didn't walk out of the room. I didn't protect myself. I trusted somebody that was untrustworthy. What's the real anger here? I'm angry because they said a bad thing and about me to somebody else. Well, okay, that's right. He, he, we get to be angry. See, the good book says, love this. First time I read this, it blew my mind. Be angry, yet do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Okay, so those of us who have post-traumatic church syndrome, the word sin was going to go ping. You translate that. It says, be angry, but don't miss the mark. Be angry, but don't miss the mark. Don't mess up. And don't let the sun go down on your anger. So anger is fine if we don't screw up. And what do we do to screw up? We either vent, we either take it out on someone, we take it out on ourselves, or we shut down. Any of those things. Don't do that. That's missing the mark. That's missing what we came here to do. Because what we do is we cocoon ourselves and we don't feel life. And when we don't feel life, we're not alive. We're just trudging. Spirit doesn't want us to trudge. Spirit wants us to live and live well. So don't let the sun go down on our anger. And do not give the devil an opportunity. Oh, OK. So when I'm harboring anger, I'm angry and it's your fault. I'm gonna just hang on to that for a while because I want to. There's opportunity for us to do the wrong thing. And then not only do we hurt ourselves, we hurt other people. And then that makes us feel worse. And then we get all spun up again, right? So anger, I am angry because. Anger's the first one. Then I am sad because. Well, no, I'm not sad, I'm just angry. Well, keep looking at that anger. When the anger subsides, there's the sadness. I'm sad because, I'm sad because 
I really appreciate this person's uh, friendship and this is a wedge between us. That makes me sad. I'm sad about that. And then fear. I'm afraid that, or I'm afraid of, I'm afraid that I can't mend this. I'm afraid that I'll say the wrong thing. I'm afraid whatever. Look at it. Look at it. Anger, sad, fear. I'm afraid. And then we'll notice that there's judgments. Well, they should have done, I should have done, and here's where the forgiveness steps in. Here's where the real power of shifting comes in. <coughs> Go ahead and look at it. Go ahead and say it. I mean, you're, gonna, you're thinking it anyway, but just notice it. Pay attention because those things are powerful, and they just want to be heard. It's like our inner child is throwing a dang timber tantrum, and we're not listening. Just listen. There's no harm in listening. Are you going to stay stuck? No. You're going to listen, notice, observe, and move on. Move on to the next step. And what's the next step? Truth. Truth is, I get to, and they get to. I get to protect myself in a different way. I get to walk my own sacred path. I get to uh, whatever. Whatever suits that particular situation, I get to do that. That's my truth. From that truth, that's where I'm going to create my boundaries. And that's a sustainable boundary. I get to walk out of a room if somebody insults me. I get to. Right? I get to take a nap if I'm tired. I get to. <laughs> and at the same time, they have a right to, or they get to. They get to be where they are. It's not about changing them. It's not about judging them or making them different, even though I might like to. <laughs> but it's about living in that truth. In that truth, we release energetic attachments. That's forgiveness. That's really what forgiveness is, is releasing the energetic attachments. And my truth is my power, my power source. Um, if, we, if we're looking at our truth about this, I can be clear, I can be real, I can be at peace, my truth about this situation is, whatever. If we come back to, well, they, my truth is they're just a brat. <laughs> I might need to go back and look at anger again. <laughs> so, but it's all about paying attention. Pay attention, pay attention. And then you have a new boundary. A new boundary that will create a safe place in which I can thrive. Does the boundary fit the truth? And what that does is then that steps us into our uh, safety, clarity, compassion. And we can be supportive of ourselves. No one else is going to make your world okay. I love Phil. Phil loves me. He can't make me happy. He can take me to go to Yogurt Beach and that I can be happy with that. But he can't make me happy. That's my choice. My choice. My choice. If I'm not happy, look here. Look here. It's not about that person being critical of me and judging me. It's not about that person uh, saying things behind my back. That's not about that person at all. My happiness starts right here inside me. Now, once I get into that, it's really important to do something to support myself. Because we think, oh yeah, all intellectual, and we stick in our head. No, it's got to be locked and loaded physically in our body. And one way to do that is to do something really nice for yourself. May would probably go paint. Or Rita would probably go sing or drum. What would you do? What would you do? Somebody would knit. She dance, <laughs> right? <laughs> Somebody else might go read a book or listen to a symphony on the radio or something. What would you do? What would you do? If you don't know what you would do, this is a warning sign. Because we don't take care of ourselves. What would you do to support yourself? What's one thing you could do to support yourself? 
take a walk in the forest. Well, I can't get to a forest today, so maybe I'll do something else. What else could you do? What could you do for you to support you? We're so busy making everybody else's world okay. A lot of us do that. A lot of us have that frailty. Okay, have you figured it out yet? Figured out what you would do? Think about it. Think about it. Now, when we talk to people, we, have a, we, we are at a better, clearer space of truth. If we haven't taken care of ourselves yet, that's no time to talk to somebody. Because we're not clear yet. We've not done our work yet. Because if we aren't clear and haven't done our work yet, chances are we're not going to come from a place of love and support. We're going to come up from a place of woundedness. And how well is that going to work? Not too well. Say what? It's going to create more suffering. Going to create more suffering. Oh, just what I need, more <laughs> suffering. Right? Right. So when we, now we can, we're ready to, when we take care of ourselves and do that supportive thing for us, then we're ready to have that truthful, compassionate conversation. That other person might be experiencing an unmet need or a loss or a broken boundary, and they may just be reacting out of that. So, but when we can come from that place of understanding and compassion, then we have a different, different space to come from. And then we can ask for uh, work together. We can ask for their help. Microphone. So, one thing we could do is ask, would you be willing to, would you be willing to table that discussion? Would you be willing to go for a walk? You know, what, what's something that you could do with this person that would generate uh, the positive energies? And we allow that other person to make their own choice. One is blessing. Would you be willing to let me, would you be willing to let me smack you? No, I don't know. <laughs> Not quite the same thing. If someone is unwilling to work with us, that's okay. It's okay. They got their own stuff to deal with, right? Don't take it personally. It's not my stuff. If I'm clear, if I'm coming from a clear place and I'm coming from a supported place of clarity and I'm speaking from truth and compassion, let it go. Let it go. I have no responsibility uh, about that at, at all. And then just take a, a last look how am I feeling right now. How am I feeling? What feelings do I have? And if it's I feel disappointed because I didn't, that's okay. Might want to take a look at anger again. Anger, sadness, fear. Anger, sadness, fear. And then I get to, they get to. And that sets us free. We all just want to be free. We just want to be free. Let's do a guided meditation, shall we? And get ourselves free. Get out the back, Jack. Make a new plan. Stand. Why is that song in my head? It's been in my head for weeks now, right? Get on the bus, Gus. Set yourself free. <clears throat> Don't need McCoy, Roy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so let's just take a deep breath in. And on that exhale, just center into your heart space. Center into the core of your being. Wherever you are, be here. Be here, be clear. Sometimes it takes a moment to get here. Just be here. And now bring your attention to the top of your head. There's an energy portal there. And as you're aware of that, that opens even further. It's always open, but it opens even more and allows you to connect into divine source. And there's many energy portals over the top of your head, and you will intuitively today know which one is the right one for you to tap into. Maybe it's the copper-colored one. Maybe it's a blue one. Maybe it's 
a green one or a red one. Maybe it's iridescent. Maybe it's pink or purple or yellow. Whatever you're experiencing is what is right for you. And when you tap into that, divine love has a unique energetic signature that it is bringing to you. That is just right for you today. And allow that beautiful living light of love to touch your mind. And this will touch all of those places where we have judgments about ourselves, judgments about others, judgment about circumstances. And it allows us to break free from them. Allows us to be at peace with them. So bring this beautiful energy in and let it feed you and strengthen you. Bringing more and more of that living light of love in and let it touch your eyes. Let it touch your third eye. The discernment centers over your eyebrows and the occipital lobes in the back of your head. This, uh, this is that whole circuit that we use for perceiving, for storing information. Sometimes our information is built on an improper premise based on an old circumstance. Allow yourself to be clear. Take a new bright look at life. Letting more and more of this living light of love flow down into your mouth, your jaw, your throat. This is your truth circuit. So you can find your truth. You can speak your truth to yourself and you can speak your truth to others. You don't have to be heard. Maybe they can't hear you, but that's their stuff. This is for you, your truth. And you can hear someone else's truth and it may not align to your truth at all. Then you don't have to fix them. You don't have to change them. You can just be aware and notice when it's important for you to speak your truth. And sometimes people just need to be heard. Allow yourself to hear yourself. Bringing more and more of this living light of love down into your shoulders. We carry a ton of tension in those shoulders. Let's just roll the shoulders, loosen that up, let it go. Let it go. You don't have to carry that anymore. More and more living light of love into your heart. Heart space. And from your heart space into every organ, every system, every tissue, every fiber, every cell, even down into the cells, into the DNA. Epigenetics, change your own DNA to the optimum setting. Really being alive. Letting more and more of this living light of love fill your whole body and fill the energy field around your body. And now allow yourself to take a little walk with me in your mind's eye. And find your way out onto a country road. And that country road is going to take a fork. Does your road go to the left? Does it go to the right? Or do you go straight ahead? Which do you do? Whichever fork you take, as you're walking along, you're going to notice an obstacle in front of you. Perhaps the road is washed out or there's a big rock. You're going to ask for divine assistance. What assistance do you receive? Are you uplifted and carried over the obstacle? Are you escorted around? Are you given a block and tackle so you can climb that rock? 
What assistance are you given? And when your feet get back on the road again, you continue your journey. You're going to take a little detour and find yourself next to a stream and a shade tree. You're going to sit here. Maybe there's a fallen log or you'll sit on the moss. Whatever, whatever makes you feel comfortable, whatever appears for you. And you're just going to notice the little babbling brook. You feel peaceful. You feel relaxed. Maybe there's been a situation on your heart. And you're just going to let that flow out of you and into the stream and let it wash on downstream. You're just going to let it go. Just going to let it go. And as you release that, you feel free. You feel bright. You feel re-energized and recharged. And you realize that there is an angel or a guide or a spirit being here to support you and assist you. Just notice that. And they have a gift for you. Whether it's a word or a thought or a feeling or some symbolic object, allow yourself to receive that with deep joy, deep gratitude. Even if you may not understand what the symbolism is, it's okay. Just receive. And in turn, you have a gift you're going to give this guy. They don't need anything from you. But it's a, a beautiful token of your love and appreciation. Perhaps it's a word or a thought or a feeling or a hug or some symbolic object. Whatever you experience is what is right for you and has deep spiritual significance for you. So give your gift. And take your gift and find your way back to the pathway, back to the country road. And that country road is going to lead you back here, back into this time and space, back into the here and now. <sighs> being aware of your body, where you're sitting, feeling recharged, rejuvenated, reconnected. And when you feel comfortable to do so, opening your eyes, welcome back. We'll do communion and then if there's any questions about your uh, symbolism of your meditation, I'll be happy to respond to that. Mr. Phil. It seems as if I've lost my communion cup. Would you bring me a new one? Okay, it was right here. Where'd it go? Lost in space. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Catch. Thank you. He's not always a brat, just usually. <laughs> Got it? I did, forget, I did forget my coffee. You forgot my coffee, too. That's why that cup was sitting there. No, I poured it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I'll go get it in a minute. No, oh, no worries. Yeah, no, I left back there and I said, why is that cup... Why did you want with your toast? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Join us in prayer, would you please? Loving spirit of light, as we take this in, help us to take in life, all of it, all of it, and help us to take a look at ourselves in a new way, in a new truth, and with a loving, compassionate embrace. Walk with us. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. By being so sacrilegious sometimes, I just feel a bolt of lightning just getting ready. Well, really, remember what really, we say. Not really. Better to be sacrilegious than sanctimonious. That's right. That's right. Better be neither one, but...
Let's get the most difficult cup in the world. Mm -hmm. I do. I feel vindicated, though. <laughs> uh, there it is. Good thing I have fingernails. Would you join us in prayer at last, again? <laughs> Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in your love. Help us to drink in your presence. Help us to be aware of you in our life at all times. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. Yep. Raised in Catholic school. Went to church five, uh, six days a week. The only day I didn't go was Saturday. And he's still a heathen. And I'm still a heathen. <laughs> Still He's a practicing eagle. Oh, right. you have good streaks. You have good streaks. Can you imagine going to church every day before school? Yeah, that was interesting. Volunteer? Yes. Thank you. boundaries was really on my mind this week. Anyway, and in the same way, like, without boundaries, you can't have energy for yourself, because especially if you're somebody who makes everyone else, everything else has to be okay before I'll take time for me. Um, but that also made me think about gratitude, which I love to talk about gratitude when we're giving my money. Um, <laughs> so a lot of people think about the law of attraction and what we give out, we get back, and but I think it's not as simple as that because I don't know if you've ever felt this way. It's like sometimes you feel like I give and I give and I give emotionally and I give financially, but I don't feel like I'm getting back what I give. But I think there's something in there about receiving, like being open to receiving and noticing maybe things that are there that you, you didn't even pay attention to. So, that was just what was on my mind. So, um, as you get today, favor to me. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, money is energy. Right? It's just energy. <coughs> so, just bless it, give it some love, and then open your heart so that you will get back exactly what you gave out. And thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> See, sometimes it's locked. Okay. okay. Yes. Question? Comment? No. Comment? Get a microphone. My birthday is July the 31st. And it's the 82nd. Woohoo! Happy birthday! Yes. Just send me a hello and how are you? <coughs> and what is it? Just hello. Day. How are you? So good. <laughs> so somebody lead the happy birthday song. I'm terrible at it. So somebody lead. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sandra. Happy birthday to you. So anybody have a question about your guided meditation or the gifts you received, the gifts you gave? Yes, Marlena? Can we, can we pass the microphone? Oh, Mary Lou's got it. Mary Lou will do it. Let me get the camera going here. Yeah. Okay. Go for so, it. Oh, there you are. Uh, I received a baseball glove. A baseball glove. Yes. So, be ready to catch what's coming. <laughs> Good stuff's coming. I love it. Thank you. So, 
So I was with you every step of the way, actually, and I was probably just a step ahead of you. Oh, I love it when that happens, because that means you're right where we need to be. Yeah, I think so, too. And um, I took the uh, left hand fork to the road, very familiar, huge gap in this dirt road, um, and I was lifted over it. Awesome. Okay. And uh, I, I was by the bubbling brick or the creek before you uh, Oh, I love it. About it. Um, there was a giant hornet's nest up there in that tree, but it never bothered me the hum of it almost was, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but at any rate, I was given a, a book. I don't know what it was, but then, and I've heard this song all week long. Um, Phil's working on that. Sorry, it's just the feedback from the speaker. Yeah, I'm just leaning on the arms of Jesus, but oh, the song just left me again. Okay, it'll be back. Yeah. So let me start talking. Keep the microphone, and it'll come back to you while Standing I'm talking. Standing on the arms of Jesus. Is that it? Standing. No, nope, that's leaning. <laughs> or leaning on the arm. No, okay. anyway, I don't know. There's a standing one. I know there's a standing yeah. one. I, yeah, I almost got it. Okay. okay, so standing on the promises of God. Yeah, something like that. There you go. Uh, standing on. Oh, anyway. I can't get it. Um, so the left hand turn is this is taking you to. Um, it's not what you've left behind necessarily, but. Um, <laughs> How can I say this? What is left for you to do? Okay. There's what's left for you to do. Mm -hmm. So there's still things that you're working on, still things that you want to do for you mm -hmm. uh, in your world, in your journey, in your mission, mm -hmm. if, you would say, if you'd like to say it that way. Um, uh, the big gaping hole, and you were just lifted right over it. So whatever difficulty is in your life, you're going to be uh, carried. It, you, you got spiritual assistance to carry you through. Um, the hornet's nest. This is, it gets, it's fine. If everything else is busy and hectic and crazy, you don't have to be. You can be, you can be peaceful. You don't need all of that. Uh, and it doesn't need to affect you at all. And you were give, did you ever, other than the song? I got the song. Yeah. The peace that passes understanding down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes, passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Yeah. So this is just letting you know that peace is really significant for you at this point in time. And that when you feel as if you don't have it, ask for it and it'll be given to you. It's a gift. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for, thanks for sharing your journey with us. Anybody else? Got some over here? So I took the right side of the road. Okay, so the right side of the road, this is about what's the next right step. And I came across a fence in the road, like chicken wire fence, and I was handed a pair of wire cutters. Okay. And then I wound up at the brook, and I received a blue marble, like a really royal colored blue marble, mm -hmm. and I gave a large white feather. Okay, so the clippers to cut your way through, um, this is just letting you know that any obstacles are in the way you have tools to get through, mm -hmm. right? Um, the blue marble, it feels to me like this is something new. Taking the right hand turn is something new. The blue marble is something new, uh, new of interest to you. Uh, and the white feather is acknowledging that angelic presence in your world. So you have assistance with whatever it is that you're choosing to focus. Thank you. You're welcome. One more behind you, and then we'll get you. All right, left turn. Left turn. Encountered a bear. A bear. All right. That was that. I brought my honey. <laughs> and then the gift was unusual. It was copper, like a wall. So, kind of, I was very confused. At that. So, copper? It was a copper? Copper ball. 
copper ball. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about your bear. Um, are there, and you went to the right or left, I'm sorry? Left. Left, okay, so there's things left for you to do that you're, you're on track, you're doing, so it's current stuff that you're working on, uh, or current um, focus that you have for yourself. <clears throat> and it's acknowledging that for you. Uh, the bear has to do with, um, and you had honey for the bear, so a bear can relate to challenges, but it also can relate to, um, bears are very protective. So this could be letting you know that you have protection and the key is finding the sweetness in any situation. And then you'll be protected from whatever situation there is. Um, and then this copper ball, copper is very um, conductive. So there's energy here that this copper ball is bringing to you so that you have a clearer sense of the energy that you're working with. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. It's both are things that are going on. The bear came in as the spirit guide a while ago, and the copper, <coughs> that's something I'm still trying to evaluate. Gotcha. So whatever it is that you're working on, just know that, A, the energy to do it is here for you. And B, you're going to be able to, to sense uh, external energies in a new way. That helpful? Anybody else? Lori, behind you. Um, I went to the left and there was a log and I just stepped over it. And then the person went to Jesus, but it was like, when they stand like that. And then he gave me a silver bracelet that said love forever and I gave him a bouquet of balloons. Oh, how fun. So the log and you just stepped over. Any challenges in your life, you're, you're capable of handling them. Um, and then what did you receive? You received, oh, when Jesus standing like this, that's the ascended. Yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, this is that ascended Jesus. He's not hung on a cross somewhere suffering. This is that ascended Jesus. So you have access to the all-powerful and the one that is in charge and has power to help you whatever whatever help you need um and he gave you a bracelet about love i think that's pretty uh understand understandable the you giving him balloons was it multicolored or just one color multicolored okay so this is your willingness to be happy your willingness to be joyful and that is contagious your joy is a gift you can give every day to everyone. So thank you for that. Anybody else? What is down the middle if you went down the middle? Oh, if you went down the middle. Uh, this, is, this is staying the course. Keep, keep on keeping on. You're right where you need to be, doing right what you need to do. Okay. There's one other question. Joni? Is it Joni? Yeah. Um, I went down the middle. Down the middle. Stay the course. I ended up being in jail. <laughs> in jail? Yeah, I was locked up. Um, oh, good Lord. Yeah, and I was given a key to get out. Okay. Uh, so, so any prison that you find yourself in <coughs> is self-created. But spirit has the key to let you out. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. We do that. You know, the prison of our mind is just worse than any other kind of prison there is. Okay, I think that's it. Do you, anybody else have any last... Okay, let's do an energy circuit for the folks online. And then we'll do our energy circle. And we have a special song for that <coughs> by request. Come on. Okay. All right, welcome back. You're still connected in. Bring that energy into your heart space, from your heart space to your left hand, left hand to right hand, and back to your heart space. And you'll feel energy flowing from you, through you, and building between your hands. This is not your energy, this is divine sacred energy. This is healing energy, this is awareness energy, this is compassion energy, and it's for you. So bring that into your heart space. Have a great week and we will see you next time. God bless. Bye, say goodbye everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, let's circle.